So today I'm going to be giving you guys the best Warzone settings because it has come to my attention that the majority of new players hop on the game without ever changing their settings from the default when they first started playing the game. And as a gamer, your settings can mean the difference between you performing poorly or performing very, very well. These tips are primarily for controller players, whether you're on PC or console. So with that in mind, the first setting you need to change is your button layout. Now this depends on the type of controller that you use and on your hand placement for example guys since this year in august i started using a battle beaver controller with back buttons but before that i was using a regular ps5 controller with no extra bells and whistles and i got myself to around a 2.8 kd and that is well above average considering most players average kd is around a 1 kd or something like that so when i was using a standard controller i used tactical flip as my button layout and the reason you want to play on tactical flip it switches your crouch button from circle to the analog stick the right analog stick for you to click it this way you guys can slide cancel easier and when you guys get into gunfights when you have to slide cancel and do advanced movements you do not have to constantly take your thumb off the right analog stick to click circle a million times in just a single gunfight now for the claw players you also want to change these settings because you do not want to be wasting your time with your index finger spamming circle just to slide cancel man you need to be using your index finger for weapons swaps and reloading and jumping you don't want to waste your time clicking a button that you could just be using another finger for now for having your layout as flip because we are using tactical flip tactical is switching your circle to your analog stick and the flip with this does it will change your triggers aka your aim and your shoot to your bumpers so this is r1 and l1 on the playstation controller or rb and lb on xbox controllers and having your bumpers as your aim and shoot buttons is way better than having your triggers because you have way less input delay meaning your character will respond a lot quicker in game and we all know in fps shooters every single millisecond counts so tip number two the next setting you want to change is your controller dead zone do not copy and paste what you see on screen because currently i have my left and right stick dead zone at about a 0.15 a 0.15 i use a program called ds4 windows and inside ds4 windows it allows me to change my dead zone inside the program so what i did was i set my anti dead zone inside the program to a 0.15 which counters the end game dead zone which pretty much means i have have zero but then inside the program as well i changed the regular dead zone to a 0.03 so i have a 0.03 dead zone in game but for everybody that's using a controller on console or you're using a controller on pc that's maybe an xbox or you just don't have ds4 windows downloaded i recommend anywhere between a 0.03 dead zone to a 0.05 but the way you really want to do it you want to fix your dead zone to where you have no analog stick drift if you're not moving your analog stick at all that's the proper way to do it but i do see that 0.03 dead zone and a 0.05 is the best i honestly have a little bit of stick drift if i'm not moving but it does not mess me up actually it is a lot better because it allows me to make my micro adjustments with my aim because i don't have to move my analog stick so far to get a response and i probably should have explained this at the beginning of this tip but what dead zone is it's pretty much how far you need to move your analog stick from the center of the socket to get a response in game. So if I was to set my minimum dead zone to a 0.5, meaning 50%, that means I would have to move my analog stick 50% to the outer bounds of, you know, the controller analog stick socket for my character to respond in game. And obviously you don't want to have your dead zone that high because you won't be able to make any type of micro adjustments at all. Honestly, it's going to mess you up more than anything because you just have to push your stick so far for you to even get the slightest of a response. So next up is your horizontal and vertical sensitivity. Now, let me say this. You guys could very well play on a 2020 sensitivity and be an absolute beast at the game, but that does not mean it is the best settings for the average player or even the best settings if you guys are trying 
to perfect your aim. You need to find what you're comfortable with and that will be your sensitivity that you need to perfect. For some people that might be a 6-6, six, six, it might be an 8-8, eight, eight, it might be a 10, it might be a 20. Honestly, you do not need something as extreme as a 20-20, but I will be making a video on how to find your perfect sensitivity in the future. So make sure you guys subscribe and turn on post notifications so you guys don't miss it. The rule of thumb for the majority of players, you want to be playing around a 6 to an 8 sensitivity. That is what most of the pro players play on. That is what honestly most players in general play on. Now, I do know that if you are on console because your fov is so low you're playing with an 80 fov you might want to mess around with a higher sensitivity you might want to start off with about an 8 sensitivity and maybe go your way up to like a 10 or a 12 just because your field of view is so short and you guys might not be able to turn as fast but i recommend you guys starting off with a 6 sensitivity and work your way up from there if you guys find that it's too slow or just you know play around with it for a while and just try to perfect six or eight or just whatever you need just find what you're comfortable with and don't change your settings too often because a lot of people change their settings like every day and they never get comfortable with the settings that they already have now for the hidden tip that only a few players know about that is going to be your aim response curve and and tip number five there's actually another settings that a lot of people don't know about that will just make you guys feel like you have aimbot so this tip right here is going to be your aim response curve type now most players use dynamic that is what the majority of pro players use but if you're a new player and you never change your settings or you're a really casual player and you never change your settings you're probably on standard and honestly standard is the worst aim response curve and let me tell you guys why i don't like standard now you could very well be a monster with standard i guys i don't want you to think that you can't use certain settings but there is a like best settings or the most optimal settings that you probably should be using. But there are three different response curves and each curve has a different algorithm. Like I was saying, they're standard and dynamic and the last one is linear. So the standard response curve uses a simple power curve, which is literally just like, you know, half of a parabola if you guys, you know, know algebra and all that stuff. So the reason I don't like standard is because it starts off very slow. And the problem that I found with it, no matter Matter. if i was at a far distance or close quarters combat it was extremely slow your aim speed that you see in game is in direct relationship that you have your response curve set so because it is a simple power curve it starts off so slow and in close quarters and far range combats you're just not going to have the reaction speed that you feel like you should have had because when you first start moving your analog stick it goes extremely slow and then it gets faster 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 over time and we all know when we're in the middle of a gunfight or we get caught off guard somebody's hiding in a corner whatever sometimes you might have to react extremely quickly so standard is definitely not what you guys want to be using now for the other choice dynamic a lot of players go with dynamic because they can control it best it is a hybrid between standard and linear and also dynamic actually removes the problem that i was talking to you guys about with standard it removes that delay that you guys will feel if you have standard my only problem Problem with dynamic for me it wouldn't get fast enough the more i move my analog stick like further to the outer bounds of the socket or whatever and the reason it didn't help me a lot is because i play extremely aggro and i need to have really really fast response time and i just i kind of play like keyboard and mouse on a controller even though that's not a thing but that's kind of like the closest thing to how i play so dynamic just was not for me so you guys are probably just wondering why didn't you just turn up your regular sensitivity because guys at the end of the day the way your response curve works it doesn't matter if you have your your sensitivity at a 2020 if i have my response curve at standard i'm still going to experience that slight delay so your your response curve is kind of like the overseer of the rest of your other sensitivities but for what i like to use and a lot of pro players that are really really good like destroy and a couple of other reputable youtubers and players we use linear and that's why for me 
I like the linear response curve because my aim stick is directly proportional to the aim rate. So I don't have to worry about the slow start of standard or the slow middles of dynamic. Everything is directly proportional to how far I'm pushing my analog stick, which just, you know, it goes really well with my sensitivity. Now, if you decide to use linear, you guys need to know that you will have to change your vertical and horizontal sensitivity. You do not want a high horizontal and vertical at all. I actually recommend you guys going lower than what I recommended earlier in the video. If you guys started off with a six, I recommend you trying a four, four linear. And you guys will see what I'm talking about when you try it. It is way faster than if you had a six, six standard or six, six dynamic. A four, four linear is extremely fast. Well, not too, too fast, but it's really fast in comparison to having like a four, four dynamic or a four, four standard. So start off with a four sensitivity and work your way up maybe so a six and if six feels too slow for you which it probably won't i say go to a max of eight but honestly personally i use a six six linear sensitivity i don't use anything lower because i feel like it's too slow for me and i don't use it anything higher because it is way too fast so real quick before i get into the final tip your custom sensitivity per zoom make sure you guys have that on because with the new vanguard integration they actually made this a settings it's actually in vanguard but you can select the custom sensitivity for each of your zoom multipliers so what i like to do is i like to have my ads low zoom at a 0.85 my two and my 3x at a 0.85 and everything else is at a one except my high zoom i want that at a 1.05 now you guys can play around with this if you like if you feel like when you're aiming down sight your sensitivity might be too fast you might want to lower some of these settings or if you feel like it's going too uh slow you might want to boost some of these settings tip number five this is where a lot of people mess up as well their scale aim assist with fov now this might only be for the pc controller players i'm not too sure if you guys have this on console i'm pretty sure you don't because you guys don't have fov yet but this is probably one of the most hacks settings in all of warzone especially if you're on pc controller because what the scale the aim assist will do it pretty much will change your aim assist bubble because you guys know as controller players we get aim assist and there's kind of like an aim assist bubble where the closer you get to your target your sensitivity starts to slow down so you can constantly hit your shots on a person now if you have this setting on your aim assist bubble will scale to your fov so it will feel as if your aim assist bubble is a lot smaller because it scales with your fov but if you have this settings turned off and or disabled like you should you're gonna feel the fattest aim assist bubble ever like it is actually kind of crazy how how big this aim assist bubble is it's the reason why a lot of people can beam you down from such a far distance or even close range you're like dang like how are they staying on target and i'm slide cancel this and that bro that aim assist bubble is really really nice um it does work really well with linear because linear you really move fast but then that big aim assist bubble it will slow it down so then you guys can hit your shots so i really do like 66 linear with scale aim assist off and this is what i go with this is what a lot of people have have your skill to aim assist off so there you guys have it man these are five tips that can completely turn your whole performance your whole gameplay your whole experience on warzone around if you guys made it to the end be sure to hit this video with a like let me know if you guys had these settings or if you had no idea what any of these settings did and let me know honestly if you even changed your settings are you like just a a casual or you're just a complete new player let me know down in the comment section below and also make sure you guys subscribe to the channel because i will be coming with a lot more videos to help you guys out that includes your movement that you guys should have your audio just general settings that a lot of casual players may not have so be sure to hit the subscribe button so you guys don't miss a video man other than that it's been a blast it's your boy big cat 188 i'll catch you guys in the next one and i'm out peace